In this video walkthrough, we're going to continue our study of place value and we'll look more specifically at decimals on a number line. And this is really part one or setting up for standard 5 NBT4, which is rounding decimals. So it, sometimes it helps to understand decimals when you think of them on a number line. And as we, we've looked at before in our previous video of making sense of decimals tenths through thousandths, we've noticed that all decimals fall between zero and one whole. And that's exactly what we have going on here. If you could just pretend that this was a candy bar, it could be anything really that you want to divide equally into ten parts. You might pretend you have a candy bar and you divide it in dividing it among your friends and each person would want the same size portion so we have that's what we have going on here we have one whole broken up into 10 equal parts and that kind of connection can help us understand what decimals really represent or stand for what they mean so if you look here we have like I said before we have zero and one whole and in between we have our tenths shown. We have one tenth, two tenths, three tenths, four tenths, five tenths, six tenths, seven tenths, eight tenths, nine tenths, and finally ten tenths or one whole. Now what we can do to really get a, an understanding from you know taking the jump from tenths to hundredths, we can really focus in on this area. We have the area between 0 and 1 tenth. Well, what would happen if we divided that area into 10 equal parts, 10 even smaller portions? Well, that, you might be thinking, would be how we show hundredths. So we're going to zoom in on this area between 0 and 1 tenth. So let's rewrite these. Now you can follow along um, with the worksheet, and you can print that out at worksheetsandwalkthroughs.com. So once you've done that, you can follow along. And if I, I'm going too fast, feel free to pause the video and resume it when you're ready. So here we go. Again, we're zooming in on this area between 0 and 1 tenth. And if we divide that, further into 10 equal parts. So there would be 10 smaller parts that would be 1 tenth the size of 1 tenth. Or 1 tenth divided by 10. You might be thinking that you might want to show these as hundredths. And if you were, you'd be exactly correct. Again, we're between 0 and 1 tenth. How would we show, hmm, one hundredth? Well, when you write hundredths in decimal form, well, this would be one hundredth, okay? This was shown as one tenth, and there's the tenths place. And now we want to show our one in the hundredths place. So that would be one hundredth. You're probably thinking, oh, this must be two hundredths. You'd be exactly correct if you were thinking that. Good for you. Followed by three hundredths and so forth. Four hundredths. Five hundredths. About halfway there. Exactly halfway there between zero and one tenth. Six hundredths. Seven hundredths. Eight hundredths and nine hundredths. As you can see, you got hundredths checking in at one-tenth the size of one-tenth. So you can fit ten of them between zero and one-tenth. Now, to our expand our thinking even farther, or further, we can 
divide this section between 0 and 1 100th, we can divide that 10 times once more. So again, as you're moving from tenths to hundredths and then eventually to thousandths, you're really getting one tenth the size. I mean, one tenth is one tenth the size of one whole. One hundredth is one tenth the size of one tenth, because it takes 10 of them to equal one tenth. And you can extend that thinking. And now we'll extend this number line, we're moving from 0. We're dividing the space between 0 and 100th 10 times. And we'll extend our page here. Let me bounce this up a little bit. There we go. So let me rewrite that. I think we'll use a different color to make it stand out more. Again, we're, notice we're starting with zero each time. And in this case, we're moving, we're showing or representing zero through one hundredth. And if you divide hundredth by ten, you're probably seeing the pattern here. That would equal. One thousand. Look at that. So again, we have zero tenths, zero hundredths, and one thousandth. So we'd continue our pattern there. We have zero tenths, zero hundredths, two thousandths, three thousandths. Is zero. This decimal point should be moved over here. Sorry about that. Okay. Now we've got. Four thousandths. You might have to write a little smaller if you're filling in that worksheet along with me. Five thousandths followed by six thousandths. Double oh seven thousandths for England. Uh, never mind. Um, we've got eight thousandths. Nine thousandths. And finally, you would actually have ten thousandths. Let's, find, let's see how that would look. Ten thousandths, and you can see that it's the same value as one tenth. I'm sorry. The ten thousandths would be the same value as one hundredth. Look at that. And you can see that. Hmm, look at that. And ten hundredths would be the same as one tenth, if you're thinking that good for you. So you can see as that as we continue to divide our whole up into or by actually by powers of ten. So it would really be dividing by powers of ten as you move. Um, through the decimals there from tenths to hundredths to thousandths. Now, as you can see, um, thousandths are much smaller than tenths. They're one tenth the size. Thousandths are one tenth the size of hundredths, and hundredths are one tenth, tenth the size of one tenth. And one tenth is one tenth the size of one whole. And to further kind of represent that. If we had this whole square, and re this represents one whole, one-tenth would be shown this way. Clearly, you can see 10 of these would equal one whole. So that's one-tenth of a whole, or there's our decimal rep for representing tenths right down there. Then, you could break it down even further, and it would, these would be hundredths, and it takes ten hundredths. 
equal one tenth. This might look familiar to you if you watched the video on making sense of decimals. There we go. That'd be eight hundredths, nine hundredths, and ten hundredths, which it would equal one tenth. Now we broke that tenth down even farther. You would see that it would take ten thousandths to equal one hundredth. The great thing about our base ten system is you can decrease in value in terms of powers of 10 or 10 times. You can clearly see that it would take 10 thousandths to equal 100. So 10 of these thousandths equals 100. And 10 of these hundredths would equal 1 tenth. And 10 tenths eventually would equal one whole. So there's a quick look at decimals on a number line. So thanks for checking out worksheetsandwalkthroughs.com, and we'll see you again next time.